Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Most Merciful. I would like to welcome you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon you. And with that welcome, I introduce you to another in the series Understanding Islam. And in this segment, we will be continuing with the concepts which we developed in the earlier segments, which had to do with the particular features about Islam which prove that Islam, in fact, is the true religion of God. In the earlier segments, we looked at the name of Islam, we looked at the concept of God in Islam, we looked at the concept of worship in Islam, we also looked at the universality of Islam. In this segment, we are continuing on from the concept of the universality, that uh, Islam is something attainable by anyone, anywhere. The question arises, if the foundation of belief in Islam is that belief in God, and a correct belief in God, we said, then how can people find God? If they are born in environments where they may be, people may be their families or their society may be worshipping idols or trees or planets or people or whatever. How does a person through all that find God? Well, what Islam teaches, as is clearly stated in the Quran, in the seventh chapter, known as Al-A'raf, verses 172 and 173, God says in the Quran that when he created Adam, he took from Adam all of Adam's descendants. This is in the spiritual form. All of mankind that was to be was created at one time in the spiritual realm. And Allah asked them, who is their Lord? And they all said, you are, or you, you, O Allah, is our Lord. Now, God went on to say that he only did that so that people would not have any justification on the Day of Judgment to say that they didn't know about God, one, or to say that it wasn't really their fault that they were worshipping other than God because they were only following what their parents did. This is all that they were exposed to. So God is clarifying here that the concept or knowledge of God is imprinted on the soul of every human being from the time of its creation before the human being's appearance in this world. To further strengthen that and give it clarification, Prophet Muhammad, may God's peace and blessings be upon him, had said that every child is born in a state of natural belief in God, natural state of Islam. However, it is their parents that turn them into Jews or to Christians or to fire worshippers. This is that essentially each soul has that consciousness of God. So no matter what circumstance a person is brought up in, there is deep within himself or herself a realization that God exists. And God doesn't leave them in that state. He further shows them signs in their lives. Different things will occur, different incidences will occur in their lives, which will point out for them that whatever false belief they're involved in, whatever concept of God they hold, which is false, in fact it is false, 
God will show them the signs that it is false. Now, after a person realizes this, then it is up to them to act on what they know to be true. For example, if we were to take the case of a young man brought up in the middle of the jungles of South America. In his tribe, they worship an idol. Now, one day, this young man, he goes into the hut in which the idol is kept. And as he sits down to worship this idol, a dog comes walking into the hut. And when it reaches next to the idol, it lifts up its leg and urinates on the idol. When the young man sees this, he is very upset. He chases the dog out of the hut. Terrible thing that it did. But he has to think. This idol which he is worshipping, could this be the creator of the universe? Unable to stop a dog from urinating on it. This is a sign for that young man. I mean, we may not consider this to be a sign of God, but in fact, in his particular case, that was a sign for him that the idol that he is worshipping is not God. I have spoken to many people who have become Muslims, and in each and every individual's uh, case, we find different signs. One friend of mine told me uh, that on one occasion, when he was in the church worshipping, down praying before the statue of Jesus, as a young person, he happened to look up and he noticed that the toe was broken off the statue. You know, there was this image of Jesus on the cross, who was the image of God that they were worshipping. And he noticed the toe was broken off. And this was something which struck him. That, you know, what is this? This is God? That fact that the toe was broken off was enough to wake this person up, to question, can this possibly be God? And so on. So with different people's lives, you will find that there, there may be very simple things. What may touch this person may not touch another person. And always, of course, the signs of God that God gives us are particular to us. What may be suitable for you may not be suitable for somebody else. But the point is that in each and every life, each and every human being's existence, God shows him or her the signs of his existence and that whatever they are worshipping, which is not God, is false. So, the ability to recognize God, to come to the conclusion that there is a God and that the God is not the idols or the, the different forms of creation that the people around us are worshipping, this ability is in the grasp of every human being. Allah has created us with an internal concept, an internal recognition of God. And he has given us in our lives signs which point towards the true God. Furthermore, he has sent messengers. Throughout the ages, he has sent messengers to different uh, segments of the earth to inform people, to further amplify the, the spiritual message, which is part of our nature, which exists within our life circumstances, the prophets came to further amplify, emphasize this message and point us in the direction of the one true God. Therefore, dear viewers, the concept of the universality of Islam is built on the concept that each and every human being knows God. Even the biggest atheist when he falls into a state of depression, he's in an airplane and the airplane is going to crash. 
He's in a boat on the, on the sea, and the sea becomes so rough it's turning over. He doesn't call out, oh, Marx, oh, Lenin, help me. He will scream out, oh, God. Though he's a person who has not been believing in God all along, you will find him in, at the time of, of dire need, he will call out, oh, God. And this is what you find in the Quran. Allah speaks about this in many places. And these, the worst of believers, they dis deny God outwardly, but they recognize him within their own souls. And when they find themselves in states of calamity, they call out to him. However, once the calamity is removed, then they forget God again. This is the ongoing process. However, as we pointed out, each and every soul has that consciousness. And it is the environment which seeks to distort that consciousness. So it is only for each and every one of us to look within ourselves, to reflect within ourselves, to accept the signs of God when they come to us in this life, and to follow the truth, to follow the correct path to God. With that, dear viewers, I'd like to thank you for being with us in this segment of the program, Understanding Islam. And I hope that the ideas that we are trying to share with you are ones which are comprehensible, you can understand and appreciate. And I hope, inshallah, God willing, that you will continue to follow the remainder of this, the segments of this program. And before closing, I would like to remind you to write in if you have any questions or suggestions to Understanding Islam, Sharjah TV, P.O. Box 111, Sharjah, to me, Dr. Bilal Phillips. And with that, I would like to bid you farewell now. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.